There's a famous P equal to NP conjecture in computer science with a million dollar bounty on its head. Let's dive into what it means and try to do it in a way that the concepts stick. So a prerequisite uh, for complexity theory is the big O notation. And this is a concept that applies to functions. Take an example of function gx equal to c, just a constant, and another, another function fx equal to x. Now, there's a certain x equal to x naught given by the red line, where once you cross x naught, fx is always greater than gx. So fx dominates gx. And even if we try to add some handicaps, uh, saying that we are allowed to add any constant to gx and we are also allowed to multiply any constant uh, by gx, so c1 gx plus c2, uh, the conclusion stays the same. So eventually uh, fx passes this new function c1 gx plus c2 and once it passes it, it uh, stays greater than it. So again there is this x, x0 where once you cross the x0 fx is always greater. And when this happens, we say that gx is big O of fx. So fx dominates gx. Uh, other examples, take any polynomial, a quadratic function, cubic function, it's going to be dominated by an exponential. The exponential is going to cross it eventually. Take a logarithmic function, which is the inverse of the exponential, any polynomial is going to dominate it. Uh, the simplest one being just x. So if the big O notation is something that applies to functions, why do we worry about it in the context of algorithms? That's because the exact runtime of an algorithm as a function of the size of the input depends on many factors like the hardware it's running on, the language, Python, C++ it's implemented in, etc. And no one has time to delve into those details for each individual implementation. But those details only add additive and multiplicative constants to the runtime. And the big O notation by design isn't affected by uh, those kinds of things. So any conclusion you draw that's based on the big O notation is robust to those kind of details. So now we can start putting the different problems we've encountered, are going to encounter into these different sets. If the runtime of the problem in the worst case uh, is uh, dominated by some polynomial, is big O of n to the power k for some constant k where n is the size of the input of the algorithm, we say that that problem is solvable in polynomial time and it belongs to the set P. Uh, one detail is that this set only applies to decision problems, so you should have a yes-no solution. So for example, sorting an array, you can do it in O big O of n log n time, but that doesn't belong in set P because it's not a decision problem. Now uh, that's not always a big deal because uh, a lot of problems can actually be reduced to a decision problem. So in terms of sorting, you can ask what are the number of inversions in the array um, and in order to count these inversions without getting into the detail of what they mean, you have to sort the array. And, and so if you ask is the number of inversions uh, less than 5, uh, you have to sort the array anyway. So you've converted the sorting problem into a yes-no decision problem. So the next set we cover is called NP and it does not stand for not P, it stands for non-deterministic polynomial time. And the non-deterministic means that a solution is just non-deterministically handed to us and then we have to confirm uh, whether it's yes or no. And again, this set is restricted to decision problems. Um, and uh, as a concrete example, let's say you're given an array and you have to say, is this array sorted or not? Uh, you can just loop through the array and uh, make sure that every element is larger than the previous one and th that's a linear scan through the array, so it's linear time and uh, so this problem lies in the set NP. It also lies in the set P, uh, but there could be problems that you know are not solvable in polynomial time but verifiable in polynomial time. So, so far we have these two sets P problems decision problems solvable in polynomial time and NP decision problems verifiable in polynomial time. It's easy to see that the set P has to lie completely within NP because if a problem is solvable in polynomial time then it is also verifiable because you can, if, you, if you're given a solution you can just solve it and then uh, compare the answer to the, uh, uh, to the solution you're given. And it, it's clear that you know the problems that are in NP but not in P will be harder. Now the next important class is called NP-complete 
and in order to understand this class we need to understand the concept of reducibility solving one problem with another by reducing an instance of the first problem to an instance of the second and doing this in polynomial time so then if the second problem is solvable solvable in polynomial time the first one is as well because you go from the first to the second and then second to the solution so we do this all the time uh, let's say we want to find the median of an array and we already have a very efficient algorithm implemented that sorts the array if you're feeling lazy we're just going to call the sorting routine sort the array and then pick up the medical uh, middle element and that's going to be our median so we've reduced the median problem to the sorting problem and this is in polynomial time because uh, in fact it's constant time because we just read the middle element so in 1971 cook and levine proved something quite remarkable they proved that all problems in the set np which we discussed uh, just before this uh, problems uh, verifiable in polynomial time can be reduced in polynomial time to just one problem so one problem to rule them all and what was this problem this is the boolean satisfiability problem so it's basically a set of equations where the variables can be uh, boolean one or zero and there's a bunch of or conditions between them won't go into too many details but yeah this was a pretty remarkable uh, result to prove but then others started proving that boolean satisfiability itself could be reduced to certain other problems and so that means that all problems in np could be reduced to those problems as well um, and then instead of one problem to rule them all we started getting a set of problems to rule all the problems in np and uh, this set was kind of uh, expanding uh, more and more with time so that's what np complete means this is a set of problems that all problems in np can be reduced to in polynomial time so if you solve any one of them that means the entire set of problems uh, in np can be solved in polynomial time so this np complete looks like a powerful set where you solve any one of these problems in polynomial time and all the problems in the, in the set np are solved so let's go over some examples the first one is from graph theory max clique problem uh, the word clique comes from you know in high school there are certain groups uh, where everyone is friends with everyone else so if you create a graph uh, where the edges represent friendships then you you'll get some parts of the graph where which are all kind of densely connected to each other and that's what a, a clique is so if you're given a random graph and you 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 want to find the size of the largest clique then uh, that's called the maximum clique problem now now that problem is not an np complete because it's not a decision problem so to convert it into an np complete problem you have to turn it into a decision problem so here you can see in this graph the maximum size is 3 so it's these three um, vertices all connected to each other and then if you frame it as is there a clique in this graph larger than uh, two nodes in size uh, that's a yes no decision problem and that problem would be in np complete another related problem is the clique cover problem so we already know what a clique is uh, but now what is a set of cliques smaller set of cliques that cover the whole graph so in the graph from before we already have this largest clique of largest size and the other cliques are just two vertices in size and then uh, if we have a collection of these three cliques we end up covering all the vertices uh, of the graph so to convert it into a decision problem you say is there a clique cover a set of cliques uh, that uh, cover the whole graph with size less than four right and in this case the answer would be yes so the clique cover decision version of the clique cover problem is also in np complete so let's review the three sets of problems that we've covered so far the first was the set p all decision problems solvable in polynomial time then you have the set np all decision problems verifiable in polynomial time again worst case with the most efficient algorithm and then you have this third set np complete which are also decision problems verifiable in polynomial time but all problems in np uh, including p can be reduced to these problems so uh, if you solve one of them in polynomial time all these three sets will collapse uh, into one and it's clear that you know the, the the level of difficulty increases as we go from p to np to np complete now this is the final set we are going to cover this set is called np hard so 
if there are problems in np complete where which are decision problems and any problem in np can be reduced to them in polynomial time then there must be problems outside the set np complete as well where any problem in np can be reduced to them in polynomial time and so this larger set where we are not necessarily restricted to decision problems and we are allowed to go outside np uh, is called np hard and so it's clear that np hard and np intersect in uh, np complete um, and so you know th th these are really uh, the set of problems to rule them all all the problems in np has become even bigger again these are not necessarily decision problems um, and some examples uh, so the optimization versions of the decision problems we covered the np complete decision problems the clique cover problem uh, you know if you just say uh, given a graph find the clique of maximum size uh, that would be an np hard problem uh, but the decision problem is also an np hard problem because uh, np complete is a subset of np hard and then there are also problems in np hard that are not even solvable in the worst case so an example is the halting problem where you're supposed to tell if a problem if a given a program will, uh, will will ever stop or not and in the worst case it will keep running because in the worst case you'll just you can just uh, give it a program that has an infinite loop and so uh, th this this can never be solved no matter how much time you have and it can be shown that all problems in np can be reduced to uh, this halting problem but that's not very useful because yeah, you know, in the worst case, you can never solve it. So that's the set NP hard. So now we can add the latest set of problems we covered uh, to our previous picture. And then we get this famous diagram. Um, let's look at uh, various examples of problems uh, in the different sets. So uh, counting inversions in an array, which you do via sorting. Uh, and then putting some you know decision threshold on that number is a problem in p uh, then what is the problem in np which we haven't yet shown to be np complete uh, an example is graph isomorphism so you're given two graphs and uh, both could really be the same graph uh, and so saying whether or not that's true uh, with the input being the two graphs is, is, is graph isomorphism um, and we haven't proved that it's not an NP complete, but uh, we haven't, you know, ruled that out either. So for now, this is in, in NP, but not in NP complete. Uh, then uh, the traveling salesman problem and a bunch of others we discussed earlier are in NP complete. Um, uh, NP hard, you know, traveling salesman, the optimization version, you know, remember NP and NP complete are only for decision problems. Uh, longest path between two vertices in a graph uh, is also np hard problem even though the shortest path uh, is not and then there's a line which demarcates solvable versus unsolvable problems and the halting problem as we discussed is not even solvable in any, in any amount of time worst case so now we get to the famous p equal to np conjecture remember how we said that if any problem in np complete is solved in polynomial time that would mean all problems in np are solvable in polynomial time and then you know this class np would just disappear and all the problems would just be p like all the problems would just be solvable in polynomial time so the set p would grow and uh, eat up the entire set uh, np and uh, obviously this set would be contained in, in np hard so this is what the world would look like if someone maybe you uh, succeeded in solving one of those np complete problems in polynomial time so we kind of glossed over the fact that if p equal to np the new class p would be completely inside np hard so why do we have this where the set p uh, is gobbled up by np hard uh, why can't we have something like this where the set p still expands to encompass np but some part of it is outside and and then the intersection of this new set p and np hard is still np complete um, and then the reason is that uh, we could call this new set uh, in the world where p equal to np we could just call it p complete because the np and p are the same in this world um, and then uh, in that case why wasn't there a p complete set to start with and the reason is that any problem in p can be trivially 
reduced to any other problem in P in polynomial time. Uh, you just solve the second problem, ignore the solution, and then solve the first problem in polynomial time, and it, it, it's still polynomial. So for, for that reason, uh, there's no such thing as P complete, it's just the whole set P, and, that, and, and, and hence you can't have uh, a portion of the set P uh, outside NP hard in, in, in this P equal to NP world. So now how do you win a million dollars via this P equal to NP conjecture? One method is to show that P equal to NP by solving one of those NP complete problems in polynomial time, but most researchers think that's impossible and in fact P is not equal to NP. Uh, but uh, you can also prove that a P not equal to NP, which is uh, probably uh, the truth. And if you can find a problem, you can prove is in NP but not NP complete. Uh, you've shown that there is a set uh, NP incomplete uh, which exists. Um, and these are problems in NP by definition, but not in NP complete. And, and that would immediately imply that P not, not equal to NP and you would win a million dollars. So an obvious problem that is currently in the NP incomplete set is graph isomorphism as we discussed earlier. So if you can show that this is definitely not in NP complete, other problems in NP can't be reduced or any one problem in NP can't be reduced to this is the graph isomorphism problem. Uh, you, you've shown that P not equal to NP and resolve this question for humanity.